All right, moving right along, rational functions, or rational exponents. In the previous two sections, we learned all the exponent rules that we're going to learn, um, but we applied them only to exponents that were whole numbers. So in this section, we're going to extend that. Um, and so rational exponents are exponents that are not integers. So for example, uh, a rash rational numbers just means um, any number that's able to be expressed as a ratio. So any fraction or a non-infinitely repeating or non-infinite decimal um, or things like that are called rational numbers. And so rational numbers as exponents are rational exponents. So most commonly we're going to be dealing with simple exponents like one half or one third or you know three fifths, simple fractions, uh, but still something new that you haven't seen before. Before we do that, we want to give a refresher on what are roots. So an nth root is the inverse of an nth power and is written little n right there and then the square root symbol. But instead of square root symbol with nothing there, you put in a 2 for a square root or 3 for a third root or 4 for a fourth root, something like that. So to refresh memory, like if 2 to the third power equals 8, then the cube root of 8. You're asking yourself what number when raised to the third power equals 8? The answer is 2. So it's an inverse function. It takes the output and the input and it switches them. So an nth root can be written as a fractional exponent. So the nth root of x can be written as x to the 1 over n. Mm, very interesting here. So we can extend this to any uh, fractional exponent or rational exponent. So x to the nth is the first part, okay? And a power of a power uh, multiplying n times 1 over m gives you the n over m. So anytime you have a rational exponent, which is a fraction, uh, that's the same as the mth root of x to the n, or the mth root of n, or the mth root of x, sorry, raised to the nth power. Um, and either of these forms, either this form or this form, are appropriate, and it just depends which one you're trying to use, uh, which answer you would prefer. <clears throat> this one is probably better because if you take the mth root first, you have a really small number, and then you can raise it to the nth power easily. If you do this one first, you're going to raise the power of the number, which will give you a very large number in here, and then you're trying to take the root of a very large number, which is a little bit harder. So this is probably the preferred way to actually solve problems. But mathematically speaking, the numerator of the exponent is your power, and the denominator of the exponent is your root. Okay, problem solving tips. When you're taking roots, the best way to do it is to fully factor the expression inside, and then you can cancel out roots and powers. This will make more sense. Canceling out roots and powers will make more sense when I do examples. So be sure to watch the next slide after this, and I'll show you what I mean. And then the other thing is to solve an exponential equation. This is where you actually have an exponential expression equals another exponential expression. The way to do this is to get the two bases to be the same and then compare the exponents. So again, both of these you'll have to see by looking at the examples. Here we go. Write each expression in radical form or write each radical in exponential form. So 13, the square root is the same as 13 to the 1 half power. Square root of 37 is the same as 37 to the 1 half power. Okay, let's see something like this. The 1 half power is the same as the square root. And everything is in parentheses, so everything goes under the square root symbol. The square root symbol applies to all of that stuff. Now look right here. The 21 does not have an exponent, so it's just a normal 21. But the z has an exponent of 1 half, so the z is what's inside the radical. So 21 times the square root of z. 21 times z to the 1 half. Okay, simplify. 1 over 81 to the 1 fourth power. Ooh, okay, this is going to be tricky. The 1 fourth power means the fourth root of 1 over 81. Now, of course, you can do this in your calculator. Um, but the way that I said before is you want to factor the thing inside as fully as possible. Now, 81, you might know, is the same as 9 times 9. And so this is the fourth root of 1 over. This is the same as 9 times 9. 
and 9 times 9 is the same as 3 times 3 and this one is also 3 times 3 so this is the same as 3 to the fourth power okay well the fourth root of 3 to the fourth power those cancel out they perfectly cancel out and so your answer is one third the one fourth root of one is one because one to any power is still one and four cubed and then the one fourth power or so the fourth root cancels out the um, I said four cubed but I meant to say it was three to the fourth power let me write over here three to the fourth power and then fourth root of that equals three so the fourth root and the fourth power cancel out fourth root fourth power cancel leaving behind just a three in the denominator okay let's move on to the next one so this is let me leave it as an exponent form so 32 you could write as 2 to the fifth power and 1024 let me see I think that's going to be 4 to the fifth power it is indeed 4 to the fifth power okay all that to the one-fifth Okay, whether you write it as a fractional exponent or as a root, the fifth power to the one-fifth cancels out and gives us two. The fifth power and the one-fifth power cancel out, gives us a four. Two over four reduces to one-half. Okay, um, something like this, the fifth root of 3,125. So we want to factor 3,125. It looks like five goes into that, so start. You can use a calculator to factor as well. So 3,125 divided by 5. So this is 5 times 625. Okay, and now 625 also has a 5 in that. So this is, here, let me just go like this. 5 times 125. And 125 is 5 times 25. And that's 5 times 5. Okay, so we have a 5 here, a 5 here, a 5 here. 5 here and a 5 here. So this looks like it's 5 to the 5th power. Okay, and all that was to the 1 5th, right? So this was all to the 1 5th, which means this is all to the 1 5th. So our final answer is just 5. Okay, and the very last one here, we'll squeeze it in on the bottom. When you're comparing these two expressions, this is 3 to the some unknown power. This one, when you're comparing, they have to have the same base. So we need to write this 729 as 3 to some power which we're going to fill in. Okay, so 729. I know that 729 has a base of 3, so 729 divided by 3. So this is 3 times 243, and then I can divide by 3 again, and I get 81. And you keep going, right? 81 times 3 and then the 81 can divide by 3 again and if you keep going you end up getting 3 to the sixth power is 729 okay so if 729 is the same as 3 to the sixth power and that has to be the same as 3 to the x power then it's pretty easy for you to see that 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the sixth therefore x equals 6 so that gives you a bit of an example of how to solve these rational exponents type of problems. Number one, you want to practice factoring. And, you know, when you're factoring something, if you see that there's a four through involved, then you can be pretty darn sure that a four is a factor of that number. And so start by factoring out whatever number it is that you see. Um, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, sorry. Ignore that. Uh, just factor the numbers like normal. And the number of factors that you get uh, should match the exponent. So something to the fourth power you expect to cancel this four out. Alright, see you in class.